Hi, everybody. This is the first in uh, my next series of tutorials about going from SketchUp to Twin Motion. So, I'm going to finally make the transition from working in SketchUp uh, uh, to actually shifting over to bringing it in Twin Motion, how you modify materials and how you add plant materials and other uh, objects in Twin Motion. So, I'm going to start here in SketchUp. Uh, this is the model I did uh, use for one of the earlier tutorials. Uh, I've already brought a few more components in. Uh, I want to talk about a few things in terms of how you need to set up your model in SketchUp and what things you need to think about. Um, first off, just as an overview, there are a couple ways to get SketchUp models into TwinMotion. One of them is using TwinMotion's plugin. Uh, I'm not really going to cover that right now. Uh, just because I really think uh, well, there has some been crash, there's been some crashing issues with Twin Motion, and I know when I was using this kind of, it's like Lumion's Live Sync. Uh, it gave me a lot more trouble instead of just importing it directly into Twin Motion using the standard import method. Uh, either way, you can just use the SketchUp file format itself. You don't have to convert it into some other format. Uh, and I'll talk about a couple other options later on, but. Uh, um, I'm going to stick with just a straight import. You can still update, come back to SketchUp as I've been prepping this file for this. I've gone back and forth between TwinMotion a few times, added a couple things that I'll talk about, and then just updated in TwinMotion. There are a few issues when we get into the talking about plants. This tutorial is going to be about kind of how you set it up in SketchUp, bring it into TwinMotion, the basic TwinMotion interface, how a TwinMotion model or scene is organized with the scene graph, and uh, how to set up containers or folders uh, before you start adding things in Twin Motion. I'm going to stop this one there. And the next one will be all about materials. And then the third one will be about plants and uh, kind of plant placing methods in Twin Motion. Okay, so one of the questions, so I'm not going to use this kind of live sync function. I'm just going to save the SketchUp file. You can leave it open, go back into Twin Motion, import it in and uh, update it whenever you need to. So it kind of gives you the same function. Uh, but there are a couple of things you need to think about either way. One, the first one, of course, is what do you want to what do you want to put in SketchUp? What do you want to leave out? Since we can import native SketchUp models into TwinMotion, all these things here, uh, the, the shade structure, the sculptures, the fences, the band, uh, the stages, built geometry in here, the rest of these are components that I got from 3D Warehouse. Uh, you can bring all those into Twin Motion directly and place them where you want. So, how do you decide what to put in SketchUp? I like working in SketchUp, or if you were using Rhino, you could keep things in Rhino. Just because I have more control, uh, as you'll see, there's a couple methods to import uh, a couple different settings as you import SketchUp geometry into Twin Motion, and it affects what you can do with those objects. Unfortunately, the ideal settings don't exist in Twin Motion. It's kind of either you bring in the geometry in a way that allows you to manipulate it, transform it, or you bring in the materials that give you the option to manipulate them. And it's probably more important to be able to adjust the materials in Twin Motion. So I kind of think of SketchUp as the geometry engine uh, where I want to make all my changes. So if I decide I don't like these, uh, you know, fences uh, or these. Um, structures in, this, in the right place here, I can go in and scale that and modify it in SketchUp and then just update that import in TwinMotion. So I would say for the most part, get all your major design elements placed in your SketchUp model uh, so that you're ready to go. One of the things you don't need to place in, like I have this, because there isn't exact replica, I found this band component on 3D Warehouse. And uh, so I put them in there. Obviously, they're not going to be animated or as high resolution, but it's kind of a specialty thing that I, I can't really do in Twin Motion. But other than that, all the people I would leave out of your SketchUp model, cars, um, if you find good light fixtures and other kind of site utilities, feel free to bring those in. You can add lights to those in Twin Motion and do night scenes really easily. But you know, like these speakers, this came in as a full component, so I just put that in SketchUp. Um, you want to make sure that anything that potentially you might need to modify the geometry of uh, that you want to keep in the SketchUp model. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing. Really important is materials. This is kind of the most critical one. 
And I think I've mentioned this a couple of these items before, but one is you want to make sure each surface that represents a particular material like paving or the surface of the stage or sand back here or grass or planting bed, that they all have unique materials in SketchUp. They don't necessarily have to be uh, image map materials uh, that have uh, use a, a photographic image. They could just be colors, but they need to be unique because uh, there is actually there is actually a way to modify an object versus the entire color, but it's actually a lot more efficient if you have things already kind of figured out in SketchUp so you can just make global changes in twin motion so that everything's consistent. Otherwise, we start individ editing individual objects. You can spend a lot of time and then you have to remember the settings from one object to another and it just makes it more complicated. So uh, that's the first thing. You want to make sure you apply unique materials to unique surfaces so that you don't want to make uh, the sculpture the same color as the fence if you want them to be able to be treated differently. Uh, and uh, Or if you had a whole series of these fence um, structures that you would want to, uh, decorative wall structures that you'd want to make sure they're all consistent with the same material so you don't have to edit them individually in twin motion. Another aspect of applying materials is this, even this walkway which looks relatively flat I turn my hidden geometry on, you can see that it's a landform surface uh, that I created and then edited with Artisan. So because of that, I want to make sure that those textures and are projected textures. And so the way I do that in SketchUp is I'll I have a couple rectangles off here to the side. You can apply whatever pattern you want out here on this planar surface. Uh, then you can select it, right click, go texture and choose projected. That converts it into a projected texture. Then you can pick that up with a paint bucket and apply it to your surface. And one of these, the sidewalk by the road, uh, it doesn't have a projected texture and you can start to see how it, the texture kind of goes back and forth, whereas this is projected and it's uniform across the whole surface. That makes a big difference in Lumion. And uh, uh, again, there's a way to override that in most cases, but it's better just to get it right in SketchUp in the first place. Then you don't have to worry about changing the UV maps in Twin Motion. Uh, and again, if you miss one, you can always come back here, change it, and update it when you go over there. Um, general modeling principles in SketchUp. Again, you want to make sure you use groups and components. Um, Depending on how you import it in Twin Motion, those can become very important. It can it can recognize the hierarchy of groups and components in a SketchUp model and bring it in that way. And that may might be important if you're bringing smaller pieces in later on. You you might want to import like I'm going to import this entire site as one main model, but then later on I might choose to bring in some other SketchUp components individually into Twin Motion. That's fine to kind of combine those two techniques. Uh, I have my layers open over here. Basically, you want to keep your layers pretty well organized. Keep them to a minimum. Most things can be on layer zero. And if you want to, I didn't make a separate layer for the sculpture and for all these things. But again, just that's more about working in an organized way in SketchUp than it is for Twin Motion. We're going to set up our own what they call containers in Twin Motion to make sure that that uh, works okay. But definitely use grouping. And uh, but probably the most critical thing is really making sure that you're careful about your textures. So in other words, if there's a material in this stage lighting structure there, I don't want that same material on the fence because I want to be able to treat those separately and differently. So that, you know, inevitably, if you have a complex model, you're bound to repeat a material, a basic gray color, for example, or SketchUp only has a small selection of metallic textures. And if you use those on multiple objects, you might want to scale it differently on one versus another one. And uh, again, I'll show you when we get to the material section, how to adjust that. But the more consistent you can be, the faster you can make modifications in twin motion and the less time you'll spend doing it. Okay, so that's kind of the things we have to think about SketchUp. Um, and once you've made any ch every any changes here, we're just going to make sure this is this model has been saved recently. So I'm just going to do another save to make sure anything that I've changed here. Uh, I'll show you one other thing before I uh, switch over to twin motion because this is just a just a little detail. 
And I did it partially on this stage. So again, since I just extruded this stage up, I could have used more segments in my arcs to make this a little smoother, but I ended up extruding, I just offset the top edge around this and then I used the joint push pull tool to pull this half out and I didn't over here and then I also on the steps uh, kind of pulled the, the tread out a little bit to get that little bit of toe space and reveal there and same with the edges I just wanted to call that out so that when we go into twin motion you can see the difference that makes in terms of what it, what it looks like and it's not uh, it's one of the nice things since twin motion is a rendering kind of skies based on physics and real time, real world lighting, um, how it, how the way it looks into in motion is going to the way it, it would look in real life. And so you'll see how this it's not just a technique to get a better rendering. It's a technique to have it look better in reality. It's really about design. Oh, another thing I'll call out here. Your modeling needs to be consistent too. just remember this section. This is uh, this is sloppy modeling on my part and I should go back and fix it, but I'm not going to because it demonstrates an issue because the way materials are applied and because the fact that most that sketch up models, this doesn't have a thickness to it. It's just a front and the back surface. It, you can get surfaces that occupy the same plane in space and that's something you really want to avoid if you're going to be using twin motion because you'll see the kind of flickering that you see here when I zoom in and out that will happen continuously in twin motion so if you see that in twin motion you know you've got to go back to your SketchUp model and get rid of these duplicate surfaces that basically you have two textures on two different surfaces that occupy the same plane in space and that's not a good thing and you'll never be able to resolve it properly in twin motion it has to be fixed in SketchUp so keep that in mind uh, as if I pull this wall out and it overlap farther it's okay it can go through it and be inside it it just can't be sitting in the exact same plane all right so once you've got your model kind of ready where you want it to go uh, we're going to switch over to twin motion and I'm just going to start uh, an empty document now one of the things you also have to keep in mind back here, if I go to window and model info, I want to check the units. Uh, I know from students I'm working with, uh, those base models are pretty much all in meters. I'm pretty sure they're all metric units. This one happens to be uh, in architectural. So it doesn't matter what it is, however you want to work, but make sure you know what the units are in your SketchUp model, because one of the things we're going to take a look at first in twin motion is getting this new document set up with the same unit so it, it gets the, uh, the scale correctly and it's bringing it in in real world dimensions. So the first thing we're going to look at real quick are the preferences. Uh, we've got three options, settings, quality, and appearance. And this is really just about the appearance of the interface. Quality is how nice things look on the screen and obviously the the higher the setting of quality, the faster your computer needs to be. So this is also a tip if you're working at home and your computer isn't quite as fast as you'd like it to be. You can set this down to medium and it just means that what you see on the screen is not going to be as close to what you will actually get when you render out images or video. Uh, so I this computer that I'm using is definitely able to do the ultra setting, but um, again, Twin Motion has had some stability issues, and so I've set it down, and it seems to be much more stable when it's not running on the uh, ultra setting, and it looks pretty good on the screen uh, with that setting. Uh, on the settings here, again, first thing you want to check is the unit system. So if, since I'm an architectural units in SketchUp, I want this in inches. If you're in meters, set it at, at meters. Um, I'm not going to go over all the rest of these in real detail. Angle snap. I usually set this down to one degree because when you start rotating or modifying objects that you place in twin motion, it's really nice to be able to have a little finer control over how you snap it around. Uh, we'll talk about paths probably actually in a fourth tutorial that gets to uh, be about animation. Uh, this is a setting just to be aware of. I think it defaults maybe to medium or near, but uh, uh, if you start using grass, 3D grass in Twin Motion, uh, especially this version 2020, it really it cuts it off so that you don't really see it until you're zoomed in. Again, when you render, it shows up, but it's an, uh, to allow it to have good performance on the screen in real time, it, it has a clipping plane that it basically cuts it off after you get a certain distance. And this setting controls how far back. And even on the far setting, you can't see it that far away. So uh, that's important when we get to plants, because when you start placing grass, uh, if you're zoomed out too far, 
you can be placing it and you can't even see it. You can't tell that you're doing it because it's uh, it's the distance is too far from the camera for you to actually see it. Um, yeah, I got the angle snap, export, resync. I think that's the only things we're going to talk about here. Now, there's one other setting here that I, I don't know why it's not in the preferences. It should be, but it's under the help menu under welcome. And if you have this set, you'll see the welcome screen. Uh, you see this when when it starts up. I only had twin motion running, so we didn't see it. But this is where you can set the navigation mode. Uh, since I'm using SketchUp and a lot, I have mine set on SketchUp. You can map it for twin motion, Revit. 3ds Max, uh, Rhino. If you're a Rhino user, this just controls how the mouse and the wheel and the buttons work in terms of navigating. Also, we'll talk about moving around in, in a little bit. Uh, you can use the arrow keys, the WASD key, and then Q and E for up and down. And it has a couple different modes to to move your way through, and we'll cover those in a second. Okay, so that's kind of uh, the basic settings. I'll talk about the interface once we get this in here. We're going to, uh, this left panel is really kind of the library of materials and objects. The lower panel is our uh, functions. We have import, uh, context, settings, media, and export. And we'll cover these other ones more in detail as we move through the tutorials. On the right over here, again, if this is collapsed, you can't see it, just click on the little arrow there. This is our scene graph, and this is really important as we start modeling and working in twin motion to keep yourself really well organized. Uh, and when I started doing it, it's really easy to just start throwing everything in here, dropping plants in, changing materials, and then you end up with a whole ton of things in your scene graph and you don't know where anything is. So starting off by creating an organizational structure will make your whole modeling process work way more efficient, uh, especially as you get into more complex models. So we'll come back and talk about this uh, after we do our import. Okay, so let's go ahead and import the SketchUp model. So I'm clicking on my import area here function, and then I'm going to choose open. I'm just going to go to my uh, park, Liberty Park model. Click OK. And before I click OK here, I'm going to click on the options section here. And the most important one of these for importing SketchUp models, since Z is up in SketchUp and Z is up in Twin Motion, that's not really an issue. Unit conversion is auto. So if you're in Imperial units, kind of feet and inches, it figures that out for you. Um, and it may even do the metric to Imperial conversion as well, but I've found it more consistent if I just keep the units in the, in the same uh, system. What's really important is this collapse, the collapse options here. Uh, we've got three options. One is keep hierarchy, one is collapse by material, and one is collapse all. The preferred method that I use is collapse by material. Now, keep hierarchy is actually kind of nice. It will basically bring it in the same way it's organized in SketchUp, which you could see if you it's never showing in there. Let's go to window tray. Let's pull up our outliner. If you show the outliner in SketchUp, um, this what you see here is exactly what will come into Twin Motion. And if you, but it's it's really useful if you have your components and groups named and organized in a hierarchical way. But if you just have your SketchUp model full of groups that are just group, 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 group like this, then it really doesn't do you that much good in, in twin motion. Uh, the other reason why I don't use that method, even though it's what that does allow you to do, is to select, say, one of those sculpture objects. And you can actually move it up and down, back and forth. You can transform it. You have control over that geometry in twin motion which is great, uh, which is why I said the ideal method doesn't really exist. The problem is in, in that method, you also, you don't have control over the materials. So when you try to use some of the tools like scatter vegetation and you click on one material that you've set up so that you can fill a planting bed with uh, a certain plant, it will just fill it everywhere because it just sees all those things have been merged together. It doesn't see the difference between those materials and that's what twin motion uses to apply those scatter methods so um, it gives you control over geometry but not materials and materials are important so we're going to use collapse by material now what this means is that we can select the materials of any object in the scene and change them but you can't change the geometry so if i want to move one of those sculptures to the right five feet i have to go back to sketchup move it over five feet and then update the import 
Okay, so for right now, in this, when you bring in your main model, the base model that you're starting with, I always set this on collapsed by material. And then click OK. And it'll work through this a little bit. And you'll see once this pops up right now, we have a scene graph and we have the starting ground, which is this brick paving area down here, which we'll eventually get rid of because it's just going to get in the way a little bit. Now, there's actually a lot of a couple other ways you can use twin motion. You can bring in objects as landform, as terrain, and then manipulate those. And uh, it's pretty cool for doing kind of quick preliminary design. But in this case, I'm just going to focus on bringing in the model. So here you see the model. Notice that first first thing off is it's kind of bright. Uh, that's kind of normal because the SketchUp materials seem to have a very high luminosity, and we're going to go change all those out anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But if you want to reduce that a little bit, we could go down to the settings, just go to weather, and move the sun over a few marks. If you do that, you can see there's some clouds appearing in the sky that will start to tone it down. Uh, and then we can make some other adjustments later on under effects. We can add small again, but we'll come come back to those in a little bit. For right now, I'm not worried about that because we can uh, we can fix that by applying twin motion materials. Now you'll notice I can see the road on the left over here, but on the right, all I see is the starting ground. So I have two options for that. Uh, one is I can turn it off. The other is I can leave it on and just move it down. So I'm going to select the starting ground. You can see now I have this uh, transformation gizmo here. And uh, I'm just going to drag that down so it drops below my it drops below my surface so I can see those uh, aerial photos on there. OK, so for right now, I'm just going to do that. Hit the Escape key and deselect that. Um, now, what I want to look at then is if we go over to the scene graph, you can see here if I fold this down, these are all the materials. Uh, there's Gene Blue. That's probably one of the musicians there. Roofing shingles over on that building on the right there. So I can select those, but I can't change the geometry at all. It just it won't let me affect those. Uh, I can also pick up my eyedropper and click on that and pulls the materials up, but it also usually it. I guess it doesn't select that object. I actually have to escape out of that and click on that. Now, this is an example where you can see it's color CO4. Well, that color exists on a bunch of different parts. These are copies with the color change. So that's where you can't really affect one piece of geometry. You're kind of stuck based on the materials. Uh, but the nice thing is you can that allows you to go in there and edit those materials. Another useful thing, this is for if you click on something like that. Uh, really, really helpful navigation cue. And you can see here, I, I'm using the wheel mouse to zoom in. You should talk about navigation because that's the first thing you have to do. It's kind of slow. The bigger the model is, the slower this gets. But you can you can control that speed. If you click on the little eyeball or the speedometer, it's got three speeds, walking, biking, driving. Uh, this is great, but it's really a pain to have to come up here because there's times where you want to go back and forth. So the shortcuts for this. The walking speed, just hit the one key. Bike is the two key. Car is the three key. You can hit those and toggle back and forth between them. So right now, I'm probably at the one speed. If I type three, now you can see I'm moving in. And if you want to go into turbo mode, just hold the shift key down, and it goes a lot faster. So if you're navigating from the larger, you know, seeing the whole world, the whole scene, three is nice. But when you get down in here and you try to, it's really hard to control it. So I go usually go back to the one. And I can hold the shift key down with the wheel mouse. And now I'm moving much more slowly and I have a lot more control. So the wheel zooms in and out. Uh, if I hold the shift key with the wheel button, and I pan back and forth. The wheel itself kind of orbits the world. And the right mouse button orbits or spins the camera. Uh, also, you'll find sometimes it's acting a little weird it's because you have an object selected. If you hit escape, then it it's, it kind of stops focusing on that. There's still a couple little glitches with Twin Motion in terms of its navigation that I think they need to work on. But uh, if you're having that kind of trouble and you just can't really turn it smoothly, click up in the sky or hit the escape key a couple times to deselect any objects. Okay, so the wheel button orbits, just like in SketchUp. The right mouse button pans the camera, rotates the camera back and forth, and the mouse wheel button with the shift key, 
pans back and forth. So that's uh, kind of the using the mouse mode. You can also use the, as we saw, the W uh, and S keys or the right or the up and down arrow keys to move in and out. And interestingly enough, we're right now we're in what's called helicopter mode because we can fly around anywhere we want. But if we come over here and go into walking mode, you'll see that now we're down on the ground plane and I can use the right button, but the wheel mouse, the mouse wheel doesn't work. I have to use the, uh, uh, now I'm going to actually walk through. And probably can't hear it. But I don't know if it's recording my system sound, but each of these materials has a sound associated with it. So it gives you whether it's soft grass material or a hard material. So I can spin around here to look the other direction and then hit the W key. And, you know, while I'm walking, I can look down, I can look up, I can back up. So if you're used to playing video games, then you're good at this. I'm not, so I'm not as good at it, but uh, that's the mode we get in now. We can switch back here and just go back to helicopter. And now we're uh, back in the mode where we can zoom and pan around however we like. So those are a few of the methods that uh, we can use to, to move around. Uh, there actually is a VR method to move around, but it uh, it's not working super well, and you have to have a headset for that to work. Again, the, one of the functions that I use all the time once I discover it is the F key. I guess it stands for focus, but if you're trying to get from a zoomed out view to something quickly, and you can come in here and select that object, just hit the F key and it focuses right in on that, uh, especially with big site scale models. That gives you a really quick way to jump to a location very quickly and then move and pan around from there. OK, um, so we talked about walking using the mouse. Oh, you can also uh, another navigation aid. Like if I know I'm going to keep coming back to this sculpture to work on it or modify the color, I can set it, go over to my media tab click image, and then just click create image. And then I can go back up, say, give a bird's eye view, create another image. And now I can jump back and forth between those. It's just like saved um, scenes in SketchUp uh, or save cameras in Rhino. It's the same, same issue. Those setting a few images up for navigation purposes are really helpful. When you do that, it also puts you in this media mode, which gives you some options, other settings, and you'll notice it cropped the screen down. So when you you can jump to there and then just click quit media mode, and now you're kind of back in the same helicopter orbit mode. We'll get to those media settings a little later on. Okay, so a couple of things I mentioned before about this before we talk about the scene graph. You can see by adding that little overhang there, I'm getting a little shadow line, and I can actually see a little shadow line. It's not super high resolution. Maybe if I switch to, this is one of the things. Okay, so right now I'm having trouble moving the mouse because I'm up in a higher setting, so I just hit the one key, and now I have a little more control over moving. So let's see what happens if I go to my preferences. Quality, let's go to ultra. All right, that's a little bit sharper. You can see it clean that up a little bit. The shadows are a little more precise. And I can adjust those by clicking on the eye here and just adjusting the time of the day. And there's also a place to adjust the north setting. So if for some reason you didn't have it oriented correctly in SketchUp, you can change the north axis in, in Twin Motion. But let's look at this over here. Uh, you can see that what I was talking about with those surfaces, and there's just simply no way to get rid of that in twin motion. It'll drive you crazy if you see that flickering back and forth. So the best way to do that is just to clean that up in SketchUp and then re-import it. And if I did that, let's see, real quick, I come back into here. I know it's on this curb. Come in here and know if that got rid of it all, but let's just see. So once I do that, I need to resave my SketchUp model. You also notice that uh, 
Although Lumion has a setting where you can import the lines, and sometimes that is useful. Uh, Twin Motion does not. So if you have extra lines, even though as a longtime SketchUp user, this would drive me crazy because you don't need these extra lines in there. Twin Motion doesn't really care. It, it's going to ignore those anyway. As you can see, none of them are showing up here. So let's go back to our Import tab. And now we can hover over this model. And I'm just going to click on a little Update icon there. And it'll all disappear for a second. Don't worry. It's just going to re-import it. It's checking to see what's changed in the original SketchUp model. And then it's going to bring it back in. Now, later on, we get to the plants. There are occasion, uh, a lot of occasions where when it does this, it will drop out the scattered vegetation that you had put in. Uh, what I'm finding, though, is this import method, it does remember the collection of plants that you used to create a scatter group. So with a few clicks, you can reproduce it, but it's just a bug there they're working on. It shouldn't do that eventually. So now you can see I got rid of that. No more flicker. Looks a lot better. And uh, uh, so those are just things to watch out for when you're modeling a SketchUp. Now let's take a look at the scene graph because this is the kind of the last thing uh, that you need to do. Um, we took care of the starting ground. Now one of the things I don't want to have everything showing up inside this folder. So if I, what we've got here is containers and you can see there is a hierarchy. So this is essentially kind of the layer setup that we have. If you right click on the scene graph up at the very top, I can say new container. So I'm going to say, call this uh, placed plants. Actually, I should probably name that plants. Placed. <clears throat> now, if I really want to get probably even more organized, I should right click at the very top, say new container, and just call that plants. And then I can click and drag this on top of there. So now I have plants placed. And if I want to put more folders inside of here, instead of clicking on the scene graph, I'll right click on that folder and say new container, plants painted. And if I want to get more detail, I could right click on that and say new container and say trees. So you just have to go to the next level up, shrubs. Uh, and this makes it a lot easier when you start placing all of this, especially when you're, you can put thousands of plants into a model, uh, to be able to select them, turn them off and on, hide and show them with the visibility icon out here. So if I click on that, that just disappears from view. Um, and what the, the last step that you need to keep in mind, however, when you do this is to go down to your folder. Let's say I want to add and place trees individually. I'm going to select that, right click and say set active container. And now you can see that the title of that is bold. That means that everything I put in the model right now is, uh, is going to go into that container or folder. Uh, and that keeps it organized that way. If you forget, um, Let's say if I just come back up here and say set active container, I'll just real quick drop a couple trees in here. OK, the escape key. So now you can see those trees ended up down here below my folders. Uh, if I pull my plants, they're still there. So I'm going to open the plants. Uh, I'm going to click on that, shift click on this, and then drag and drop those inside the trees. So now I can turn them both off with a single click, or I can go in and turn, oh, it does turn both of them off. Uh, turn them off from inside the folder. Okay, so that's really important to keep yourself organized. Another thing that this really helps with is, uh, I, I, you can move these around by dragging them. So I use, always take the site and I drag it down below the last folder. Keep all these folders above because what happens is if you click on this, it automatically selects and there's no way to turn this off. And you'll click on this when you're trying to place things or if you're just you know, working through the model. It opens up that hierarchy uh, of the folder, which all those materials are in there, and then you can't find. So if this is at the top, you have to scroll through everything. Now I can just, I know I can always just push this right back up to the top, close that, and go down through here. <coughs> and I can come in and, you know, eventually I want to have uh, people, I want to have uh, 
transportation, uh, and so forth. So I just when I add this in, just drag this down. Keep always keep the base site folder or container below everything else, and that way it's easy to find what you're looking for, and uh, you can move things around if you have to. You can scroll up, close this if it you know you click on something and opens up. Just drag this all the way to the top. Now, one of the things that you, you can also do up here at the top right now, it's done on all, but once you start placing things in here, I can say, okay, I want to know vegetation. So I've only put two trees and that's all it shows. So it filters out the things that you don't need to see. Uh, and I go back to all. <clears throat> Again, you see it's open now and scroll up, close that, and I can keep track of what I'm doing here. So I think that's really, uh, really important to use those containers before you start dropping everything in. Uh, so that's kind of a, a quick overview of the basic import process. Uh, later on, I think when we get to putting people in cars, I'll talk about uh, the other import options. You can bring in OBJ files and FBX files. So uh, SketchUp can export that. Again, if you're working in SketchUp, there's not really any reason to do that unless, uh, for example, uh, if you, you can import trees from XFrog. Uh, using the OBJ format, and they have some free ones that are available on their website. Uh, but again, if, you, if you're mostly going to be having twin motion trees, those also, I don't know if you can tell, see it or not, but they're, they're animated and the leaves are blowing in the breeze. And if you bring ones in from XFrog as OBJ files, they're static. So as background trees, that might be great. But if you're going to have them in mixed in with the twin motion trees, it's probably a better idea to just stick with the twin motion trees. And we'll talk about that more when we talk about vegetation. Um, so hopefully this will get you started, the basic overview of the interface that you're working with. And uh, I might just also mention, as I said, if even if you want to bring in some other objects, some other components, you just come back down here, click import, and go through the same process. And it will line all those models up uh, in here. In fact, maybe I can pull this up. It'll take a second to load this. Um, so you can put in a whole bunch of independent uh, SketchUp models and they'll show up in the scene graph, but they also show up down here and it gets a little unwieldy. That's another reason why I prefer to, for the most part, to put things in SketchUp. However, if you're using this at the beginning of the design process and you've got the basic site and you want to be able to see how some of the structural elements like the stage and the overhead structure and the sculptures are working with the plants and you're that you're putting in uh, using twin motion, then you might want to bring them in separately. And, and, and because you might decide based on, you originally thought this sculpture should be in a certain place, but based on the plants that you're starting to put in, you need to shift it over or scale it down. You could do that if you bring it in as an independent object. If it's part of this overall site scene graph, you can't do that. It's, it's just, it doesn't let you do it. You can modify the materials but you can't modify the geometry uh, once we use the collapse by material import method. Uh, so it, you, can, you can always bring other things in later on, but again, for the most part, um, site utilities, site furnishings, people, cars, and other forms of transportation, those are all best to use the built-in um, options that we have. So you can see here, this model has a whole bunch of separate objects in it that I've gotten from the 3D warehouse. And if I go down to my images, you can see why I have that set up that way. So if I start with this one, so this is the case where this is pretty big model. This is like a 115 acre island site and it's got full vegetation scattered on it. and uh, but it does demonstrate one of the really cool things. You know, this is, like I said, 115 acres. It's got tons of detail in it, not just in terms of vegetation, but if I actually go down to, let's just go down to here. Um, oh, maybe this one. So I can spin my view around, and if I actually move inside, I don't think I have a saved view, but so uh, let's... So inside this building is an entire machine shop. And you know, I can look at go and look at the individual dials. There's desks over here that I can look at. There's individual papers and objects on the desks. 
uh, and you know some of these things they they actually have nuts and bolts and dials and all the details are right there. In fact, I think I have uh, focus on that one. Yeah, so if there's a situation where I thought I had an object, I picked this whole, that object is connected to something else, so I didn't get it, but it's, uh, you know, these are all things I brought in from 3D Warehouse to create this kind of fantasy island, and uh, inside that Let's see if we can get in there. So I gotta slow down my scrolling speed. Uh, this is like a big hangar. It's full of parts and things. So the ability to go from looking at this from a you know bird's eye view with looking at the entire 115 acres to going down to see a pencil on a desk is one of the things that makes this really powerful. And it it uh, it's because it's based on Unreal Engine that has the ability to do that, to be able to have those totally different scales of information, uh, which can be really useful for design. It's just uh, we have not used to using software that allows you to see the big picture and every detail at the same level of accuracy. So hopefully this will get you started uh, on the basic interface and excited about what you can do with Twin Motion. Uh, the next tutorial will be focused on now once we've brought that SketchUp model in, how do you modify these materials? How do we add uh, you know other textures and materials actually have more qualities than SketchUp support so things like bump maps and transparency settings and reflectivity and all those kinds of options that really give you a much more realistic look for the materials thank you